Happy Friday. Welcome into Paul Catalina's Top 5 here as we wrap up the show. Of course, brought to you by our good friends at Texas Beef House. Go to bidonbeef.com and texasbeefhouse.com and find out when the next auction is. And when you go to that auction, use our promo code 365sports at checkout to get the discount. Top 5. How did Florida get here? How did the Gators get to this point where they were a premier team in the country? Urban Meyer leaves, and then the wheels have fallen off and never gotten put back on. We're talking about four head coaches that they're going through and about to get rid of Billy Napier at some point during this year, and there's weird dynamics that go on with that and the decision that has to be made. Number five, whiffed on Urban Meyer's replacement over and over and over again. It wasn't good with Will Muschamp. It wasn't good with Jim McElwain. It wasn't good with Dan Mullen, and it hasn't been good with Billy Napier. Now, Dan Mullen did have two 10-win seasons for them, dipped down, Georgia shot up, and they reacted by firing him. Now, look, Dan Mullen is doing a great job on TV, but you fire a guy who got you to two New Year's Six Bowl games in a row because of one bad season, looks really bad in retrospect now, and uh, they just have not found that guy to replace Urban Meyer, who left after their last, uh, well, the year after their last national championship when they lost to Alabama and he moved on. So, what's next? They fell behind in facilities. Now, obviously, this is not a football facility here. This is a palace. But there were palatial things going on all across the SEC. Now, Obviously, there's a lot of excess there when we talk about waterfalls and video games and screens and things like that that don't benefit anybody but our aesthetic. But Florida fell behind in facilities, which is unbelievable considering how much money flows through the University of Florida and how they could, but they fell behind. They were behind Alabama, Auburn, Georgia, all these teams when it came to facilities and Actually, all three of the major schools in Florida fell behind to that, which is why the big schools in the SEC and Clemson could pop into Florida, start stealing that talent that used to kind of have a lid on it. You couldn't get most of it past Tallahassee, but Tallahassee, Gainesville, Miami had a lid on all of it. And how does that happen? Well, Alabama just goes down and plucks, and LSU goes in and plucks, and Georgia goes in and plucks, Clemson goes in and plucks, and then guess what? The three power schools have fallen behind. What do all those schools have in common? They were spending more on facilities and recruiting and all of that than the three Florida schools were. And Florida um, was considering their spot in the SEC probably the most egregious offender of this because they just failed to keep pace with people in their own conference, much less the two state rivals that are there. Number three, poor leadership on the university side. They've gone through a couple of presidents, and they went through some presidenting, if that's even a word, that was more sports aloof, which is, which is fine if you trust the athletic director, which they had Jeremy Foley, who's a legend in athletic directing circles. Scott Strickland has come in, one of the more th well thought of guys when he took the Florida job, but football-wise has not gotten them over the line, and basketball's been a, a little up and down too. Baseball is the crown jewel of the... Uh, athletic department right now, obviously, with all their College World Series appearances and wins uh, the last few years. But they just didn't have the kind of commitment on the sports side that they used to have when it comes to facilities and decisions. And now Florida is in the middle of Ben Sass, uh, who has uh, resigned as president due to personal issues. And there's all these budgetary things going on of, of excess spending and all that that they're dealing with. So there's a lot of chaos on the university side and has been for a little while in Gainesville, and that doesn't help you either. Remember, the key to a successful athletic department is the alignment, whatever the team is, of president, AD, head coach. They have not really had that. It's been, at best, a squiggly line for the last decade or so. Number two. Billy Napier is stuck in the mud. He really had an opportunity here because when he stepped in to the world of Gainesville, they've got boosters that are obviously ready to spend NIL, even though they messed that up with Jaden Rashada. That's not even involved in this top five, but uh, they had the big mess up with the NIL and Jaden Rashada. But he clearly had alums, people ready to spend money for him 
okay, so you've got that. You've got the recruiting going. You're starting to get people back in that are looking, you know, like the Florida players of old. DJ Lagway is the easiest name to point at. But why, are, why is that not showing on the field? Well, strategically, systematically, schematically, you refuse to change what you're doing offensively, and people have figured you out. So they're not very good on offense. They're not very good on defense anymore, which is actually something through the first two years of Billy Napier that they could hang their hat on. And he refuses to change, and adaptability is the best way to keep your coaching job. And that's why we go to number one. Nick Saban reset the board. The SEC was a very cyclical league. It was still the best league before Nick Saban jumped back into it from the Dolphins. But when he got to Alabama, he reset the board. It wasn't going to be a two, three-year pop for everybody. He created a dynasty at Alabama. And since Florida was so far behind the eight ball already, they're the power that them and Auburn and Tennessee were just so far behind in the dust of what Alabama was able to create with Nick Saban that the only school that's been able to even come close to matching it is Georgia with Kirby Smart, and he still has a lot of national championships left to win before he catches the GOAT here. But Nick Saban reset the board while Florida was going through all this, and they just got further and further behind while Alabama just kept stepping ahead and stepping ahead and stepping ahead. Now, Alabama stepped on everybody on their way to this glory, but Florida was the team very directly that suffered from this, considering it was their team with Tim Tebow and Urban Meyer that Nick Saban beat on his way to his first national championship at Bama. That team was the one that kind of ended the Florida dynasty and started the Alabama one right there. But Nick Saban reset the board. That's going to do it for us. We hope Craig and Smokey have a great time at Nebraska and Illinois. And no offense to Illinois fans, I have to deal with Smokey. So we're hoping wholeheartedly here for a Nebraska triumph on Friday night so that Smokey can see it. Um, thanks to all of our guests. Thanks to Garrett. Thanks to Jack. Thanks to Emery. Thanks to Levi. All the people involved in the show. Thanks to you for watching. Have a great football weekend, everybody.